Chaplain Cabrese, and today is January the 8th of 2014, and I want to talk to you about, are you right with God? Are you right with yourself and God? <laughs> My God is an awesome God. Can you say that out loud right now? Can you just, right where you are, can you just shout out, My God is an awesome God. See, it doesn't matter what religions get wrong, because if they don't get Jesus right, nothing else that they do really matters. Jesus is the full and complete message. Now, am I saying that the rest of the story doesn't matter? Am I saying that the works of Christ doesn't matter? No. But what I am saying, that without Christ... None of the rest of it does matter. Now see, friends, me, myself, even as a drunk, even as a drug user, even as a whoremonger, yes, one who dwelled in darkness. But see, I was a good man to others. I treated people kind. I helped those in need. I was told I had a heart of gold. But you know what that would really get me? In the long run, death and hell just the same as Adolf Hitler. Because I was not saved. I was not covered by the blood of the Lamb. Good works cannot get you into heaven. Only through His grace may you be saved, and only through salvation can you get into heaven. And only because Jesus Christ left heaven, lived, crucified, died on the cross, Mary descended into hell, rose on the third day, and lifted up into heaven. Holy can a kid a hallelujah. <laughs> can this be possible? <laughs> yes, sir. I need this to be said so you know where I'm coming from. All who know me, just for a little while, just for a little while, whether in person or online, they know that I'm suffering from a deadly disease called COPD and emphysema. Yes, I'm in the final stages, and I have congested heart failure. Hold on just a minute. Many have told me that they wish to start praying for my healing. I have even been scolded that I did not allow the Lord to heal me. Some tell me that my faith needs to be stronger. Well, friends, all I can do is smile back at them. That's not true. Because sometimes I even weep for them. You ask why I weep for them? First, they come to me and they don't ask if I have even asked for God's healing. 
They do not want to talk with me, but yet at me, like most religious people they do. Now second, I'm not talking about everyone. Many have true concern when they ask me if it's okay for them to pray for me. And they understand when I tell them why I feel the way that I do. Well, here it is. <laughs> yeah. So buckle up. Because the truth and the ride is going to be bumpy and it's getting strong. Now, this is what others say. Angelo, you know God can heal you. All you have to do is have faith. God can heal you. My response, oh, yes, I do know that. But see, what you don't know is that you're looking at this illness and saying that God can heal me. And have no idea that I've already been healed. God has set me free from bondage. He has delivered me from sin. He removed the vile, the ignorant, the demonic man that I was. He opened the blind eyes to his greatness. He healed my deaf ears through his holy word. He gave his word to my voice. Let me say that again. He gave his words to my voice. I am no longer crippled by the burden of sin, but now I walk in the light of the sun. And most of all, he has risen me from the dead, both spiritually and physically. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Spiritually, I was risen because he gave me a new life. I said a new life when I accepted him as my Lord and Savior. When I turned over my life completely to him, and I was baptized not only in water, but baptized in fire of the Holy Ghost. I am blood bought and raised up a new man. Hallelujah. Jesus. <laughs> Talk to me now. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Physically, God has actually saved my life a few times. I've been in car wrecks. I've been shot. I've been stabbed. I've had my neck broke. But the latest is my newest Ill illness. <laughs> Not long ago, I stopped breathing and was rushed to the hospital, and they didn't think I was going to make it. They cut my clothes off and shoved a hose down my throat, started emergency procedures to bring me back. God sent me back, knowing that he had work for me to do, glory. Jesus. See? So, here we are, back where I am today, right now. I tell everyone, do not pray for this illness to be removed from me. But yet instead, allow it to be used to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Let my testimony, let your testimony, help others to know Christ and to come know Christ as Lord and Savior. See, life is so much sweeter. I said again, life is so much sweeter when we have something to look forward to. See, the anticipation. The anticipation of the second coming of our Lord gives hope in this wicked world. It is a cleansing, a comforting, and a compelling hope. So now in the third chapter of Philippians, in verse 1, Paul tells us to rejoice in the Lord. We are to rejoice in the Lord because we know that He loves us. We know He has provided us with salvation. We know that he knows our problems and cares more than about what we're dealing with than even we know ourselves. As I said then, Paul is trying to get a point across this chapter, and the point is that we are to put no confidence in the flesh. The Bible uses the word flesh to describe the basic weakness of our human nature. The word flesh is used to describe humans being tendencies towards self-centeredness, weakness, sin. See, the Spirit of God lives in us when we're Christians. But there is a sinful nature that is a part of being human. And the Bible talks about that in terms of flesh or in human weakness to decide. That we want what we want. What we want is best. Or looks easiest is best. Or what we think will bring the most pleasure to us is the best way. See, now, brothers and sisters, that is a lie. Romans chapter 8, verse 5 gives us a good description of that. Those who live according to the sinful nature 
have their minds set on what the nature desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. What he's saying is that we are not to trust in our own human desires as gauge for what is right, because our human desires are many times in conflict with the leadership of the Spirit. Now Paul moves on to a specific thing about not putting confidence in the flesh in verse 2 through 10. Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the things, the same things to you again, and it is a safeguard for you. Watch out for those dogs, those men who do evil, those mutilators of the flesh. For it is we who are circumcision who worship by the Spirit of God. We glorify in Christ Jesus, and who put no confidence in the flesh, though I myself have reason for such confidence. If anyone else thinks he has reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law, a Pharisee, as for zeal persecuting the church, <coughs> as for the <laughs> legalistic righteousness, faultlessness, but whatever was to my profit, I now consider a loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God in by faith. I want you to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. I'll say that again. Becoming like him in his death. See, every time that I'm not very tactful. I let myself off the hook by remembering that Paul was a preacher too. See, Paul was not a very tactful person. He starts his passage by calling those who were telling people that you had to be circumcised to be a Christian dogs. In the Jewish community, a dog was the most lowly and despised creature around. To call someone a dog was to show utter contempt for them. <laughs> Exodus uh, twenty two thirty one. You are to be my holy people, so do not eat the meat of the animal torn by a wild beast. Throw it to the dogs. Queen Jezebel in the Old Testament was one of the most wicked people we read about, and as God described the terrible things that would happen to her to let people know how much he detested her actions, he said that the dogs would eat her. As for Jezebel, dogs will devour her on the plot of the ground of Jezreel, and no one will bury her. And by the way, if God says it, take it to the bank. Seriously, people. All right. As Jehu entered the gate, she said, Have you come in peace, Zimra? You're a murderer of your master. He looked up at the window and called out, who is on my side? Who? Two or three eunuchs looked down at him. Throw her down, Jehu said. So they threw her down, and some of her blood splattered the wall and the horses as they trampled her underfoot. Jehu went in and ate and drank. Take care of that cursed woman, he said, and bury her, for she was the king's daughter. But when they went to bury her, they found nothing except for her skull, her feet, and her hands. They went back and told Jehu, who said, This is the word of the Lord that he spoke through his servant Elijah. On the plot of the ground at Jezreel, dogs will devour Jezebel's flesh. Jezebel's body will be like refuse on the ground in the plot of Jezreel so that no one will be able to say this is Jezebel. See, dogs were considered unclean animals, and contact with one would make you unable to, to enter the worship area of the temple. 
At that time, there were packs of wild dogs that ran in the streets, living off the garbage that they could find and attacking and killing people at times. And Paul called these people who were aiding something to grace by faith alone dogs. Paul goes on, if calling them dogs were not enough, he also called them mutilators of the flesh. These people that Paul was talking about were teaching that you had to be circumcised according to the Jewish law to be a Christian. What was happening was people were teaching others to put their faith in something other than what Jesus did on the cross. The Bible says that salvation comes by faith in Jesus and what he did and nothing else. The Bible says that salvation comes by faith in Jesus and what he did and nothing else. Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe it in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. John 14, 6, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Acts 4, 12, salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which must be saved. 1 Corinthians 3.11 For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. To have faith means that we are to put trust and confidence in God wholeheartedly. And to do that, we can't put trust or confidence in ourselves or anything to make us right with God. 1 Timothy 2 and 5 says, For there is one God, one mediator between God and men, that man Jesus Christ. 1 John 5, 11 and 12, And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son does not have life. See, Jesus is not a way to salvation. He is the way to salvation, and there is no other way. We are not going to put our trust in anything other than Jesus to get us to heaven. Our confidence is to be in Him and Him only. Um, our only abilities and our own righteousness, it just won't cut it. See, in Isaiah 64, 6, it tells us, All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We are all shriveled up like a leaf, and like the wind, our sins are swept away. The literal translation of filthy rags in this verse would be used, uh, use minstrel cloth. Think of that one. All of your good deeds amount to just that. Sink that in. We can't put confidence in our own abilities. We have to put our trust in God's actions and ability to make us right with Him by trusting that Jesus died on the cross. See, the point is that if we are trusting in Jesus and something else, then we're not fully trusting in Jesus. Now Paul goes on to show that if anybody had reason to believe that their own actions would be enough to give them reason to trust in the flesh, it would be him. He gives us a list of things that he could trust in if trusting in the flesh were good enough. He was circumcised on the eighth day after he was born. Paul was circumcised on the eighth day after he was born. See, people who were not born as Jews were not circumcised on the eighth day. They had been circumcised later in life. So Paul was letting them know that he was born a member of God's people. Paul also born in the tribe of Benjamin, which was the tribe of Israel that their first king came from. And see, and a tribe that was given special honor 
So not only was Paul born a true Jew, he was born into the right family. He was a Hebrew of Hebrews. His family had not adopted the Greek customs like some others. Hebrew was their first language. And he knew the customs of the Hebrew people even more than those who were saying that you had to be circumcised to be a Christian. <coughs> Excuse me. Paul had also been a member of the most strict group of the Jewish people, the Pharisees. And he had been trained by one of the greatest leaders of that group, Gamaliel. Paul also lets them know that at one time he had a greater zeal for the Jewish religion than all of them. He, Paul, was a persecutor of the church before he came to realize that believing in Christ Jesus was the only way to be right with God. See, Paul even goes so far as to say that he had the faultless in his logistic righteousness. None of these people who were saying you had to be circumcised to be Christians could list a list of credentials like Paul just did. He had showed that he had done all these things that they said that someone had to do, and he had done more. But he also goes to show them that none of these things really matters. Again, none of those things matter. Paul says that all those things were nothing compared to Jesus. He even says that not only that, but everything else in life compared to that. Hold on, let's go again. But everything else in life was nothing compared to what? Knowing Jesus. So here we are, my brothers and sisters. How many of us have that attitude? How many of you are so in love with Jesus and feel so blessed at having the privilege of being a Christian through faith in what he did that you consider everything else in life nothing compared to it. Our goal is to be the same one that Paul had. So that when we come to the end of our lives, we can say what he said in 2 Timothy 4, 7-8. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only me, but also to all those who have longed for his appearing. Put your relationship right with God in his rightful place on your priority list. And make it a goal, because everything else is garbage. Peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with each and every one of you. For I remain in his service, and in full armor. God bless. Well, all right. Uh, we appreciate you coming out on uh, Bike Night on And Are You Right With God? Put Jesus First. I am the Reverend Angelo Cabrese, uh, CFJ National Chaplain. And I've got two songs after this, and uh, I'll be off the air, but we hope that you enjoy your Saturday. It's beautiful outside here in Memphis, Tennessee. And we'll see you again tomorrow for Down South Sunday. God bless each and every one of you. This is Wings of My Salvation by Crossfire Gospel Band. And after that, Not Too Many Cowboys by Halo Jordan. <laughs> I hear people always talking about all the bad stuff that's happened in their lives. And it seems they never, never have anything good to say. And it makes me wonder if they really know this same Savior heart. The one who changed my life 
and wash my sins away. And that's why I'll keep on flying high on the wings of my salvation. I'm gonna keep talking about what my Jesus has done. Set me free. Now don't get me wrong, I have my bad days, just like anybody else But I know why I can call out His holy name And it don't matter what I'm going through Trials and disappointments can all come But I know He'll That's why I'll keep on flying high on the wings of my salvation. And I'm going to keep talking about what my Jesus Set me Because it is God that he knows 
Glad that y'all showed up today. Peace of the Lord be with you. God bless. And enjoy each other's companies. And I'm out of here. Peace.